It's great to be back with you. I've got to start with the introduction of the most important, my wife Charlotte. We'll, we'll be married 40 years Wednesday. Folks, the facts are mean things. Listen to this from John Adams. Facts are stubborn things. And whatever may be our wishes, our inclinations, or the desires of our passions, they cannot alter the state of facts of evidence. Ronald Reagan summarized that and said, facts are stubborn things. But my favorite is Detective Joe Friday from the Dragnet series. Nothing but the facts, ma'am. <laughs> There's three issues that's been consistent with me since I entered this race on February the 28th. The first is education. Now there's some people probably from this pulpit are going to tell you that education's doing fine. Folks, I think the facts indicate otherwise. Right now, this past year we had over a thousand teacher vacancies. And folks, the people that want to enter education is slow to a trickle. Folks, we've got a crisis. We've got a problem. I've got a problem with Mississippi having the highest paid superintendent of education and our teachers being some of the lowest paid teachers. My goal is I want to go early in the session. I want, in February, I want to ask the legislature, let's fence off as much as we can prudently and carefully do, and let's give our hard-working teachers the raise they deserve. <laughs> Folks, we've got a disconnect in our education system. I want to commission a blue-ribbon panel of Mississippi educators, not out-of-state consultants, and I want to review what we're doing. We need to review the assessment test. These assessment tests which shut schools down for up to six weeks are a bridge to nowhere. You can't take that test and say how you're doing against Alabama or Arkansas or anywhere because you can't. The tests go nowhere and they cost the state of Mississippi $110 million. Now we need an assessment. We need a track for people that don't go to college. Right now, if you're in high school, the total focus of your education is to go to college. Well, what about those that don't want to go to college, or are not ready to go to college, or want to go to work? I think we've got an obligation. We have an obligation to make sure that if somebody wants to, they can leave high school with a certification to go to work with a good paying job. Now I went to... I've, heard, I've toured the high school at Neshoba Central and I saw a lot of things. They had some robotics and this and that. But I'll tell you what I got excited about when the, when the, the career and technical teacher told me about a, an association they're going to have with McLean Plumbing so that they can have some graduates finish with a certification and a good paying job. Now that's what I'm talking about. Right now, there's no emphasis that there's nothing put to that and we need to change that. We need to change that paradigm and have opportunities for our children that are finished in high school. And the facts are, Mississippi between 2010 and 2016, we lost 35,000 people. We've lost population the last three out of four years. 35,000 folks, that's equivalent of the city of Tupelo. And if we don't step up, if we don't reform the education system, if we don't try to ensure that our people finishing high school can have good paying jobs, then that's going to continue. And that's the fact. Health care. Some say that health care is doing fine. The facts are we have 31 rural hospitals in verge of closing. Now this is where we are. This is the decision point. We either step up and be pragmatic like Mike Pence did in Indiana, or we're going to have a lot of hospitals closed. Now the fact is, a hospital is like a post office. You cannot have a viable community without one. And I tell you, there's a real easy solution. Who thinks Mike Pence is a liberal? Anybody? No. Mike Pence pioneered this in, in Indiana. 37 states have done, wealth, have, have done Medicaid reform, and I think that's what we should do. Now I'm conservative. Now I believe that if a person 
on welfare wants to work, they shouldn't be cut off. I think we should incentivize people to work. I was told yesterday about a, a young man that works every day. He needs a diabetes pump. He can't get any kind of insurance. Well, folks, this is the people that we would bring in on Medicaid reform, those that are trying to work. Now, what's wrong if you have a copay, if you have a deductible? You know, we get that young man a, a pump, and he may be full-time employee in a year. He may be full-time in the workforce. Isn't that what life's all about? Yeah. Don't, don't we need to get people to step up? And let me tell you what else. With what these people would pay into the system, they're going to have to pay policy payments, co-pays, deductibles. With that, the hospital is going to unwrite the rest, and it will cost zero taxpayer money. Everybody with me? Yeah. Zero. We have to do it. We don't have a choice. I, I've been to your hospital. I've been in the Shoba Jail. I've walked every floor. I've met with the staff. I talked to the, to the director, Lee McCoy. I said, Lee, what if we did this? What would you do? And he said, you know, our lowest people on the poll are certified nursing assistants. He said, those people need a raise. He said, I need to staff my hospital. I can't even staff my hospital now. He says, we need new programs for the people of Neshoba County. But this is where we are, folks. We either step up and do something pragmatic or we're going to lose some hospitals, and that's the fact. Roads and bridges. Now, there will be some people up here to tell you that the special session solved the roads and bridges. The facts say otherwise. We've got right now a billion dollars of bridge repairs and replacements that we need to do that we can't do. The money from the lottery, which is all is designated for roads, once it starts, if it reaches the point, it's $80 million a year, and we're not going to be able to do anything with that. We need a big program. We need some excitement out there. Who wants some excitement? Yeah. Folks, the special session won't fix the bridges. It certainly will never get to the 5,000 miles of roads. And it definitely will never get to the new coverage that we need, like the bypass on Highway 16 here. Now, there's got to be a payer. Everybody knows that. And I like Ronald Reagan. Who in here likes Ronald Reagan? Well, Ronald Reagan says user fees are the way to go. He says it doesn't add a penny to the income tax. It doesn't add a dime to the national debt. And we need to look at it. Now, we can do it conservatively, at most 6 to $10 a month. But I want to do a tax swap. I think the plan to do is we need to go to, to, to a flat tax basis and we can do a tax swap of the 4% bracket, which would say the typical family of four, $200 a month, and you'll make money. So we can build roads, you can be better off, and we can move to a tax, flat tax. And the reason that's important, I think that out-of-state drivers ought to pay. Who thinks out-of-state drivers yeah. ought to pay? I think people that aren't working ought to pay. Who thinks they ought to pay at the time? The Tax Foundation, the most conservative tax group in the nation, has endorsed this. It's going to help us move to a flat tax system, but more than that, it's going to help us build bridges and roads. Now, I'm happy today to announce a program, a highway system for the future. This is a map that shows the coverage that we need, the new highways we need, including the Highway 16 bypass, including Highway 15 that runs from the Tennessee border to the Gulf Coast. And folks, you'll never have this with the money from the lottery. Everybody with me? Yeah. I think we should all join together and make Mississippi roads great again. Yeah. Now what we have in the future we're going to have an election in November. Now, I'm the Republican best able to do that for a number of reasons. One is my time on the Supreme Court, 10 years as head of a branch of government. Nobody else in the race, either party has that. My time in the National Guard, I've got friends all over the state. I think it's important to have to stood with people after a hurricane, a tornado, or, or an ice storm and be able to deal, know how to deal with the first responders. That's unique. I've stood elections, uh, I understand the process, and I'm ready to serve today. 
Uh, let's vote Waller August the 6th, and we'll carry it to November. Thank you. Yeah.